China's second biggest property company has threatened to go bust, potentially being the first domino to cause a collapse just like 2008. Michael Burry has had a strop with the Fed's inflation figures. Britain ran out of petrol for completely no reason other than the media saying we might. China banning crypto again. And we are starting to hear we might not have any turkey for Christmas. So while the media panics over that rubbish, let me tell you what is going on with my Vanguard account this month, which includes my first sale of stocks in over three years, why the 29th of September is a very special date in my Vanguard calendar, and lastly, my thoughts on why human behavior is so weird when it comes to the market moving both up and down. But first, let me tell you why Wednesday the 29th of September was such a great day. I awoke from a lovely lion, popped my dressing gown on, and trotted downstairs to put the kettle on. I looked out of my kitchen window to soak in the beautiful view of my Christmas tree as I took a swig from my freshly made brew. I looked down to my right and there happened to be sat there such a good boy. So I gave him a little pat on the head and that's when I heard a knock at the door. As I get to the door, I see an envelope which had been posted through my letterbox. I look down to see that it's addressed to me from my good friends at Vanguard. Oh my, I exclaimed, my dividends have arrived. Okay, okay, that wasn't exactly how it went as it happened to be a Wednesday and I had conference calls all day, starting quite early, but you catch my drift. However, this doesn't take away from the fact there is nothing better than getting dividends, receiving money for doing absolutely nothing. It is truly passive income. And if you haven't tried it yet, then I would highly recommend it. This quarter, I received just over 237 pounds. And what I did for that money, I will say for later on in this video. In addition to this, I've also received some money from my sale of my standalone shares, which I had invested on EQI. Why I had this money on there is a topic I've covered in another video, which I'll put a link for in the top right hand corner. But I finally decided to sell my position on EQI, which was actually bought out by the interactive investor platform. As part of this change, I found out they were starting to charge me £10 a month. And considering my position wasn't much over £2,500, it was meant that I was being charged nearly 5% a year for this. No thanks. So I sold and closed my account as soon as possible. This meant I had around £2,700 in a cash pile when including my dividends. What I do with that cash pile, I'll get to in a minute. So I actually want to do a standalone video on this subject, but I fancy sharing some of my thoughts on this in this month's update. Have you ever noticed that when the market moves swiftly up or down, the wider media seems to act a little erratically. Lots of bizarre thoughts and theories and ideas are thrown around on why the market might have gone up or down. They seem to go in some kind of frenzied state claiming they know the reason why the market has moved in such a way. Well, I want to give you something to think about. Let me share a good old psychology study from the year 1947, and it's all about pigeons. Yes, you might think I'm insane, but Bear with me. So in the year of 1947, a psychologist named B.F. Skinner published a paper on the theory of operant conditioning. Without going into detail, he basically claims that behavior is modified based on being reinforced or punished. In one of his experiments, Skinner proved that a rat will learn how to pull a lever to get food initially by accident, but over time, his behavior will be reinforced when this happens by receiving food meaning that he's incentivized to pull the lever because he knows what's going to happen. Common sense, right? Well, the opposite would be when you're punished for weeing on an electric fence. You will stop performing that behavior pretty quickly due to the consequences, unless you're some kind of weird sadist, I guess. Well, interestingly, the same psychologist found that if the reward was random, they might associate the wrong behavior with the reward and would basically start acting really erratically kind of a bit like an addict would maybe. He then did this experiment with pigeons and after releasing the food randomly, Skinner noticed some very odd behavior across his participants. One example would be one pigeon would walk around constantly in circles, thinking that would be the behavior required for the food to come out. Others would maybe stamp their feet, or actually they might stand in really odd positions. In fairness, you might be thinking, Nick, these are pigeons and they might do this by pure chance. Nothing a human would do. Well, this experiment has actually been done with humans. And one of our favorite showmen, Darren Brown, did an experiment with this concept with people in mind. It gave them a task of getting to the score of 100 as soon as possible. The catch was they didn't know what made the score go up. The contestants quickly resorted to really odd behavior as they tried to correlate the behavior to the increasing score they could see. Little did they know that the score was actually being purely driven by a goldfish in the next room swimming back and forth across a marker to increase the score. This all happened, of course, without their knowledge. All I'm trying to say here is that sometimes things just can't be explained especially in the stock market. Consider that over half the transactions on the stock market are actually performed by robots in the form of algorithms. 
So take this in mind and then think of the ape-like creatures you see on CNBC scrabbling around trying to frantically explain why the market happens to have gone up or down on that particular day or time. I do have a video planned in the future about this subject alongside technical analysis, so do stay tuned. But that's enough of the pigeons and the random A-level psychology studies. Let's get into the portfolio update and let's have a look at what I did with that cash that I had in hand after the dividends and the sale of some shares. For anyone new to this video series, here is a very quick rundown of what you need to know. I invest into the FTSE All World Usage ETF, which goes by the ticker symbol VWRL. I've been investing since the start of 2018, so nearly four years now, and I am very much a believer in lump sum investing, and if needed, dollar cost averaging. If you have any further questions, then let me know in the comments below, and feel free to mark a crash that like button while you're on the way down there. So, in terms of last month, we were riding an all-time high share price of £89, which is insane. As little as a year ago, it was just £72. But after the all-time high of £89, we have had a little bit of a sell-off, which has got a few people panicking that it's going to be 2008 all over again. So, the actual impact has been that at one point, the market was down around about 4%, but it has recovered a little bit since. If you are panicking a little bit, then I have one simple trick for you. Simply look at the one month view of your portfolio and then click on the one year view. You should now feel a lot better about it. In terms of my account balance last month, we had reached the dizzying highs of nearly £64,000 with a very tidy £14,000 profit. But after the market panicking, where has this left me? Well, we're currently £2 down from the peak, meaning the shares are around about £87 right now meaning I've lost roughly about £1,500 since this update. But as you might have guessed, I have quickly ploughed all this cash I had in my hand in the form of my dividends and the sale from EQI back into VWRL as soon as possible. So this has now brought my position to £66,341 with £15,100 in profit. You might have questioned why my profits have actually increased since my last update, and it's all got to do with me luckily buying the very bottom of the recent 4% dip before it recovered. Not bad if you ask me, but I would love to know how your portfolio has done over the last month, so do let me know. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.